<laughs> the Abbott and Costello program brought to you by Camel, the cigarette that's first in the service. Camels stay fresh, cool smoking, and slow burning because they're packed to go around the world. Listen to the music of Freddie Rich and his orchestra, the songs of Connie Haynes. Tonight's guest, the Paramount star of And the Angels Sing, Miss Dorothy Lamour, and starring Bud Abbott and Luke Costello. Costello, stop all that noise. Well, good evening, Your Honor. What do you mean? How are you, Your Honor? All right. How are you feeling, Your Honor? What's the matter? Greetings, Your Honor. Costello, please don't call me Your Honor around here. Abbott, don't be so modest. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you all to know that my old pal, Bud Abbott, has just been elected mayor of Sherman Oaks, California. So help me, this is no gag, it's on the level. And I say... And that, that's the truth. And I say, let's give his hollow a uh, hurrah. Uh, let's give his honor a great big hand. Speech, Abbott. Speech. Come on, give him the speech. All right. <clears throat> that's uh, a little too short, Abbott. I was... <laughs> make another one that we'll understand. Make I, another speech. I didn't start yet, Costello. Come on, what are you waiting for? Go ahead, make a speech. Uh, okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. That's all. I, uh, <laughs> that's all. Now, just a minute, you Costello. Notice the way he talks now, just ladies and gentlemen. Now, just a minute. So fluently. Now, listen, Lou, please. I'm very right proud. Right in my eyes. I am. Yeah. Never mind. I am very proud to be mayor of Sherman Oaks. It's a beautiful little town. Yes, I'll say it is. I just drove through it on the way down here, Abbott. You did? What's that little green building right next to the pool room? Oh, that's the city hall. Well, you better get out there right away. The rats are dragging it down the sewer. <laughs> Costello, are you insinuating that Sherman Oaks is a small town? Brother, that town is so small, the motorcycle cop goes around on roller skates. Oh. Boy, is it a lonely place. Lonely? You heard me, Abbott. It's so lonely out there, the mosquitoes go around stinging each other. No, oh, no. <laughs> But I like the way it's laid out. What do you mean? It's a graveyard with lights. Now. <laughs> All right, Costello, go ahead and laugh, but wait until next week. I'm moving into the mayor's residence. The mayor's residence. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a lovely house. Two rooms and a path. No, no. <laughs> Not bad, path. All right. You wait until you see it next week. I'm going to have the most beautiful house in Sherman Oaks. I'm putting a wing on it. Why don't you put two wings on it and fly it over to Glendale? <laughs> oh, Costello, there's no sense discussing politics with you. You're too ignorant. Ignorant? I'll have you know that in my class of school, I was a moron. A moron? I is that good? In my class, it's excellent. Oh. <laughs> oh, never mind politics. We have something more important to think about. We're starting our new picture at MGM next week, and we've got to find a new leading lady. Abbott, you're right. The last leading lady we had, boy, was she murdered. Why? What was wrong with her? Every time I kissed her, she sounded like she was gargling. And what was she doing? Gargling? <laughs> well, you have nothing to worry about this time. Metro says we can cast the whole picture ourselves. Oh, good, good. Well, good evening, boys. Oh, it's Ken Niles. Well, Say, Ken, Costello and I are getting ready to cast our next picture, and we are looking for a leading lady. Well, of course, my beautiful wife would be wonderful for the part. Look, Niles, we're not making a horror picture. <laughs> now, look here, Costello. I'll have you know that my wife is a prize beauty. I stole her from Cary Grant. That ought to teach Grant to keep his stable door locked. <laughs> I heard that remark... It's Mrs. Niles, Lula. I oh. said it for you to hear. Take it easy. Triple push. No, 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 no. I'll have you know, Costello, that I could be a star in pictures. <laughs> why, why, only last week a director told me that there was character, dignity, strength, and intelligence in my face. He must have been reading between the lines. <laughs> Costello, that, that's very unkind. Mrs. Niles has no lines in her face. Oh, no. If she had a string on each ear, she'd look like a Venetian blind. <laughs> oh. Oh. Costello, there's only one reason why I don't break you in two. Well, what is it? I couldn't stand two of you. <laughs> <laughs> you really told him that time, dear. Oh, you're a card. <laughs> Kenneth, you're a card. Oh, no, no, you're a card. <laughs> oh, I insist, Kenneth, you are a card. Well, there's a couple old cards. They, they ought to get lost in a shuffle. All right. <laughs> you kids are laughing before the jokes are out. <laughs> Uh, look, uh, quit arguing, Costello. Mrs. Niles may be just the leading lady we're looking for. Oh, thank you, Mr. Abbott. Oh, but you better give me a contract at once because two leading men are fighting over me right now. Who are they? Frankenstein and Dracula? <laughs> oh, 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 you, you bloated blob 
your head? Why, I could get hit by a truck and look better than you do. Not if I was driving a truck. <laughs> oh, I've never been so insulted since, since last week. Come, Kenneth. Oh, Costello, you, you're always insulting people, fighting with I them. I can't help it. Well, why don't you be like me, with dignity? I have poison personality. Yes, everybody says you got a poison personality. Uh, uh, just oh, a minute. Nobody ever elected you mayor. Just a minute. As the mayor of Sherman Oaks, I have to mingle with the people. For instance, yesterday, I, I christened the ship. Well, what's so terrific about that? What do you mean? I'm supposed to christen an old oil tanker today, right after this program. <laughs> Answer that. Hello, Costello speaking. Mr. Costello, this is the shipyard. Are you coming down here to christen the tanker today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be there. Well, you better bring another long, uh, long another bottle of champagne. <laughs> <laughs> Hundreds of miles south of Pearl Harbor is Christmas Island, pinpoint of land in the South Pacific, one among scores of little-known islands garrisoned by American fighting men. To Christmas Island, to United States bases throughout the world, go camel cigarettes by the million, by the ton, for camels are first with men in all the services according to actual sales records. And when camels get to the mid-Pacific, or to you, they're fresh, cool smoking and slow burning. For camels are packed to go around the world. Because camels are so fresh, because they have more flavor, more people want camels now, both at home and overseas. So remember, if your store was sold out today, try again. Camel cigarettes are worth asking for again. C-A-M-E-L-S Camel cigarettes. Camel standard of costlier tobaccos is the same for soldier, for civilian, anywhere in the world. Come in. Pardon me, I'm looking for two gentlemen. Well, uh, we're Abbott and Costello. All right, I'll keep on looking. Uh, uh, hey, just a minute, kid. Who might you be? I might be Hedy Lamar, but I'm not. Uh, we might be Abbott and Costello. But and we are. We are, certainly. I understand you two boys is making a picture. How did you find that out? Bad news travels fast. <laughs> well, boys, how about the pot? I'm a leading lady type. Hey, Abbott, this dame is so ugly, she looks like Mrs. Niles with a hangover. <laughs> Take it easy, boy. With me, looks is no problem. In my last picture, I was beautiful. They photographed me to a cheesecloth. They should have photographed the cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Just a minute, miss. I'd like to know who sent you over here. I'll have you to understand I'm a personal friend from Goldwyn. He thinks I'm a very fine actress. Goldwyn. 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 Hey, Abbott. What? If she's a friend of Goldwyn's, we'll have to give her a chance. You're right. You're right, Costello. Go ahead, miss. Uh, do something. Well, I'll do for you a little poem I'm using only for auditions. It's a short act. <laughs> <laughs> Goes like this. My mother sent me to the store to buy a sour pickle. The man gave me a pickle and I handed him a penny. What kind of poem is that? It don't rhyme. When the guy gives you a pickle, you hand him a nickel. Nickel, pickle. Pickle, nickel. That rhymes. I should pay a nickel for a pickle just to make it rhyme. Uh, look here, miss. Are you sure Sam Goldwyn sent you over here? What Sam Goldwyn? Max Goldwyn by the... Max! Get out of here! Get out! Get out! <laughs> hey, listen, Abbott. Now, what kind of dames are we going to be getting in our picture? Well, now, don't get excited, Costello. I I've already talked to Dorothy Lamore, and she's uh, going to come over and discuss the part of our leading lady. Dorothy Lamore? Yes. Boy, oh, boy. I can hardly wait till she gets here. You know, I feel like kissing her again. Again? Did you ever kiss Dorothy Lamore? No, but once before, I felt like it. <laughs> boy, am I going to have fun being Dorothy Lamore's leading man. Well, for your information, Costello, I am going to be Miss Lamore's leading man. But you have a part, too. You're going to be the stunt man. Stunt man? Not me, Abbott. I had an uncle who was a stunt man. He used to take his right hand and stick it in a lion's mouth. Really? Mm -hmm. What's your uncle's name? Now we call him Lefty. Lefty. <laughs> Costello. <laughs> Costello, you love the part of a stunt man. Uh, you'll be all through the picture with Dorothy Lamore. Now, in the opening scene, Dorothy is kidnapped by a desert sheep. He rides away with her on his horse. Look, 
Look, there he goes. Which way? What's the difference which way? I gotta know where to look. Quiet. <laughs> look, yeah. look, there All he right. goes. Right. There, there. Quiet, listen, we have no time to lose. We must chase after the kidnapper. You okay. jump on your horse. I jump on my horse. As you land on the saddle, I your grip is sure. Yeah. Your face is sturdy. My face is sturdy. Your clutch is strong. How's my transmission? Okay, ah, never mind. <laughs> your horse leaps forward. Yes. And you give him a, the bit. I give him a bit? Yes. I, I give him a what? You give the horse a bit in his mouth. What kind of talk is that? Give him a bit in the mouth. You mean I give him a bite in the mouth? No, 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 Costello. <laughs> you dig in the spurs. Your horse leaps forward. You saw through space. Soar where? Soars on the horse. You can say that again. <laughs> Finally, we head off the kidnapper, and we must throw myself in front of the kidnapper's horse. That's where you come in. What do you mean? Well, you're the stunt man. Mm -hmm. Now, to rescue Dorothy Lamore, you take my place and stop the runaway horse with your manly chest. I ain't stopping my horse with my beautiful body. No. Now listen at it. How much money do I get in this picture for risking my life? What do you care about the money? It's the experience you need. Oh, so it's the experience I need. Yeah, 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 yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Now, the horse is running madly toward you. He's frothing at the mouth. You jump in front of him and grab him by the mane. By the mane what? No, the mane, the mane, the horse's neck. Horse's neck? Yeah. But a neck. What do I care if they're like the romance? Oh, quiet. A horse has a horse? Just a minute. They got to go with other horses. Now, wait a minute. Let me finish this. What do you think we got little horses? On Never you? mind that. I think it's got a... All right, all right, all right. There's a fierce struggle. And the horse drags you for a hundred yards, trying to throw you. Your head is bouncing over the ruts in the road. Boy, am I in a groove. <laughs> but you hang on. I hang on. You don't mind the ruts. No, I've been in a rut for years. Uh, at last, the horse stumbles over you, throws you to the ground with a terrific force, and comes to a stop. Where am I? Under the horse. That's a horse on me. <laughs> and then with a sigh... Now, wait a second. How much they... money did you say I was going to get for this? I said forget the money. It's the experience you need. Oh, yeah, I forgot. It's the experience that I That's need. Right. Now, let me continue. And then with a sigh of gratitude, Dorothy Lamore slips off the horse into her hero's arms. Gee, into my arms? What? Woo! Wait a minute. What do you mean, your arms? I'm the hero. And I bend down and I kiss Miss Lamore tenderly. What's the big ad idea, Rabbit? I mean, I saved her. Why can't I kiss but her? But, Costello, you're not being paid to kiss Dorothy Lamore. What do I care about money? It's the experience, I... Get out of here! Johnny Haynes introduces a brand new song for which he predicts a huge success. It's called My Love, You Haven't Gone Away. My love, you haven't gone away. I still can feel the thrill of your caress And see your smile so full of tenderness Oh no, you're with me night and day Play me something sweet and low.
No, I mean something sweet and low and flat. Yes, that's flat. And it can be worse in your cigarette. If your cigarette has developed a case of wartime flatness, then you're looking for a cigarette that won't go flat no matter how many you smoke. Get Camels. Camel cigarettes do have more flavor, the result of expert blending of costlier tobaccos. More flavor is what helps Camels hold up. Keep from going flat, no matter how many you smoke. Prove that for yourself in your own taste and throat. Your T-Zone proving ground for Camel cigarettes' rich extra flavor and smooth extra mildness. And remember, Camels stay fresh, cool smoking, and slow burning because they're packed to go around the world. C-A-M-E-L-S. Camel cigarettes, they're first in the service. They've got what it takes. Somebody riding into the studio on a horse. Whoa, crooner! <laughs> Costello, look who it is. It's Dorothy Lamore. Well, hello, fellas. Sorry I'm late. Dorothy, what took you so long to get here? Well, I rode over on one of Crosby's horses. Dorothy. <laughs> Dorothy, you look beautiful tonight. You know, I've always been one of your picture fans. And I... Thank I, you, Bud, and I've always been one of your radio fans. And I... I now I, that I've met you, I'll be one of your personal fans. Yes, and now I... Now that I've met you, Bud, I'll be one of your picture fans. If you do, don't stop fanning each other, I'm going to get pneumonia. <laughs> I was one of your fans, you're one of my fans. Why don't the two of you go with Sally Rand or something? All right, all right, never mind, no remarks. He's a fan and a sarong. Oh. But who in the world is this overstuffed grub worm? Grub worm? <laughs> now listen here, Dorothy. I became a star before you were born. Really? Really. And I didn't have to dress up in a torn shower curtain to do it either. <laughs> now, now, Costello. That's not... <laughs> That's no way to talk about Dorothy Lamore's sarong. Why, that sarong has earned a lot of money for Dorothy. Yes, I can see it runs into a nice figure. Yeah. <laughs> Why, Costello, uh, Dorothy, I invited you over here because I'd like you to be the leading lady in our next picture. Well, I haven't finished the picture I'm making now with Bing Hope and Bob Crosby. Bing Hope and Bob Crosby? <laughs> Read it right, kid. What kind of talk is that? <laughs> Sounds like Abbott's bit in the mouth. <laughs> You know who I mean, Hope and Crosby. Oh, those guys. Why, they're just a couple of golfers, ain't they? <laughs> Don't be a caddy. <laughs> Bob and Bing are very good friends of mine. As a matter of fact, I call them Gabby and Flabby. Hey. <laughs> uh, you know, that sounds like us. I I'm Gabby. And I'm Flap Flap. <laughs> well, so I'm low man again. Oh. <laughs> Shut up, Costello. Listen, Dorothy. What's the name of the picture you're making with Hope and Crosby? Well, it's another road film. It's called Road to Utopia. The road to what, Hopia? Utopia. It's a place where nobody works. The moon is always shining, and the people just sit out under the stars and make love. That's Utopia. That ain't Utopia. That's Griffith Park. <laughs> uh, listen, Dottie. <laughs> Uh, Dolly, I I'm sure you'd like our picture. Well, I think so, too. You know, I'm going to play the part of a jitterbug in a post office. Well, that's silly. What would a jitterbug be doing in a post office? I'm standing at the stamp window getting in some hot licks. <laughs> <laughs> some joke, eh, Dolly? When it comes to jokes, we got a 100% moron this program. Yeah, and you're the 100% moron. You see, Abbott, I told you I was a moron, and you wouldn't believe me. <laughs> Morons, a high-class jerk or something. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Pay no attention to him, Dottie. In this picture, uh, you and I are going to do a love scene. My name is Abe, and your name is Anna. I see. You're Abe, and I'm Anna. Yes. We have a little fight, and we split up. What a picture. Abe, banana split. <laughs> no, no, no. Stop that, Costello. Get out the script of our picture, and let's run through the desert scene with Miss Lamore. Oh! Okay, yeah, but here it is. Now, in this scene, Dottie, you're an Arabian princess, Ben Ali, and I'm your cousin, 
Bowling alley. <laughs> your bowling alley? Yes. If she's going to wear a sarong, I want to be her pin boy. <laughs> boy, will I get stuck. You know, Costello, I think you'd make a wonderful pin boy. You do? Yes, you've got just the head for it. <laughs> well, let's get back to the scene now. Come on. Uh, what part do I play, Costello? You play the part of an Arabian civilian. An Arabian civilian? <laughs> Wait a minute. An Arabian civilian? Uh, what's my name? Hassan Ben Drafted. H- Hassan? <laughs> what did you say? Hassan Ben Drafted? Yes. Yes? Oh, oh. All right, so much for the parts. Now, let's try it out. Ken, you set the scene. Ready? Music. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we now present a soggy, sagging saga of the Sahara, starring Dorothy Lamour and Abbott and Costello. The story is entitled, Two Dirty Bedouins, or It's Time to Change the Sheiks. <laughs> As the scene opens, we see two footsore and weary Arabs trudging across the desert. They are approaching the small town of blemish on the chin. Curtain? We must hurry, Costello. The lovely... That's your line. That's your line. <laughs> Oh, boy, oh, boy, Abbott. I can't take another step. This hand is terrible. Well, and it was my line, too. Yes. <laughs> we must hurry, Costello. The lovely Princess Benelli is being held captive by that wicked sultan, Atfei Ellie Bay. <laughs> <laughs> that Atfei Ellie Bay has certainly gone the pot. Shh, quiet. We're approaching the sultan's tent. Help! Help! Save me! Save me! Costello, that's the voice of the princess. It's coming from this tent here. Hello, in there! Did you blast the tube or something? Hello! <laughs> Hello in there! It's me, Princess, me, your friend. Your friend, the Riff. Hello, Riff. What do you hear from Rath? <laughs> oh, things are pretty rough with the Riff. Riff, rough, rough, Riff. <laughs> all right, all right. All right, all right. Quiet, please, please. Wake up, everyone. It's dark in this tent, Princess. I can hardly see you. There she is, Abbott. Boy, she sure has gotten skinny. Oh. You're looking at the tent pole, stupid. (laughs) I'm the one over here with the turban on my head. My, my, but that's a pretty turban. Yes, it was designed by Diana. How do you like that? The new Diana turban. (laughs) Come, Princess. We will help you escape from the wicked sultan. Yes, I've been in this tent so long I'm getting flap happy. Shh, shh, quiet. Someone's coming, listen. Listen. The world will always welcome lovers as time goes by. Moonlight and love songs never out of day. Hey, who was that? That's Humphrey Bogart. He's walking back from Casablanca. <laughs> oh, please, you must get me out of here. The Sultan is going to sell me as a slave. Don't worry, Princess. We will help you get out, escape. But it's... <laughs> miles across the desert. Do you have a car? Nope. Do you have a jeep? Nope. Well, do you have horses? Nope. But I got a wagon. But who's going to pull the wagon? My little Pekingese dog. How can a little Pekingese dog pull the three of us in a big wagon? We've got whips. <laughs> and before we go, Dorothy, I will give you the kiss that made me famous. The kiss of fire. Like this. You ain't kidding, are you? (laughs) (laughs) That's what I... Don't pay me this week. (laughs) That's what I call fire. You better throw on some more coal. (laughs) Hey, it's the Sultan at Faye Ellie Bay. So, I catch you red-handed trying to steal the beautiful princess. Aha, aha, aha. Oh, a double feature. <laughs> hey, Abbott, when I give you the ignal say, I'll stay the light slay. All right. You got it? All right, come on, Costello. Put out the lights. I've got the Sultan's horse. I've got the Sultan's horse. Let's go. Okay, okay, okay. Hey, we did it, Costello. We escaped from the Sultan. Wait a minute. We have to go back. I forgot the princess. Oh, you dummy. I've got it right here in my arms. Look, she's fainted. She may be dying, Abbott. Oh, princess, a beautiful princess. Lift your veil and speak to me. Of course, Goldwyn said the Ove thinks I'm a fine actor. Yeah! 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 Abbott and 
Costello will be back in just a moment. Thanks to the Yanks of the Week. Tonight we salute Private Grady Robbins of Enid, Oklahoma, one of a small unit of Americans attacking German positions near the Anzio beachhead. After the men in his unit were thrown back four times before barbed wire defense works, Private Robbins took a light machine gun off its tripod and holding it in his hands, fired it as he walked forward, enabling the other infantrymen to pour through the entanglements and take the position. In your honor, Private Grady Robbins, the makers of camels are sending to our soldiers overseas 300,000 camel cigarettes. <laughs> Each of the four Camel Radio shows honors a Yank of the Week, sends 300,000 Camel cigarettes overseas, a total of more than a million camels sent free each week. In this country, the traveling camel caravans have thanked audiences of more than three and a half million Yanks with free shows and free camels. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States four times a week, a short wave to our men overseas and to South America. Listen tomorrow to Gary Moore and Jimmy Durante, Saturday to Bob Hawke in Thanks to the Yanks. Monday to Blondie, and next Thursday to Abbott and Costello with their guest, Mr. Sidney Greenstreet. And now here's Abbott and Costello with the final word. Uh, no, folks, we're a little late, so I'll just say good night and God bless you all. Be sure and tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show with our special guest, Mr. Sidney Greenstreet. Remember, camel cigarettes are packed to go around the world. Camels stay fresh, cool smoking, and slow burning because they're packed to go around the world. This is Ken Niles wishing you a very pleasant good night from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company.